to the 2024 Goodwood Revival. This is the place to be this weekend if you love all things vintage from the cowboys and cowgirls of the motorsport world. Yes, we'll have some incredible horsepower on display across the weekend. So buckle up as we bring you the very best sights and sounds from the wild west of Sussex. This car, it is, I mean, it is wet. Um, is this going to be a bit of a hand? You said you've driven it, but not here. Is this a handful in the wet, or is it all right? Uh, I'll tell you in about 40 minutes. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't driven this car one lap uh, around Goodwood. I, I did drive it at Le Mans Classic last year. Um, obviously, a very different setting from, uh, from, from here at Goodwood, but definitely a voyage into the unknown, so uh, softly, softly to start with. And uh, we look forward to a one-hour race this evening, so hopefully the sun comes out and we get that, that beautiful race into the sunset that we're all hoping for. There was a wonderful celebration at the Festival of Speed of uh, all your success in the Isle of Man. Um, it's sort of a bit of a crash back to earth today. It's pouring rain and you've got to go out on the circuit. Yeah, you know, I hear, look, you know, it's actually one of them events. It doesn't matter if it's raining, you know, it's just it, it, it's that good to be involved in. Uh, and, you know, what? it levels things out a bit here too because there's a few uh, bigger capacity engines here. So it means we're all in the same sort of level playing field. So it should be good. Uh, the... Um, the festival was fantastic for me. It was a, an experience I'll not forget. So uh, it, it's an honour to do it and come back here and ride and hopefully have a good run. isn't it? I mean, walking around, catching up with people, looking at the cars, the Myers-Manx buggies this morning. It just doesn't matter with the weather. It's, it, it's, if the sunshine is lovely, obviously, it's, it would prefer that, but it's just the most amazing event.
including uh, uh, some of iconic racing like uh, the Nervo Grid. Seeing those DB4 GTs in a row in the paddock, they're just gorgeous vehicles. The thought of them racing, and with two legends in the car, that's going to be fun. Yeah, and our car has some amazing history. I think I was told Sterling won here in 1960 in that vehicle, so uh, we've slowed down quite a bit after receiving that news. Uh, we were here testing a few weeks ago, and when they shared the history of the car, we backed it down. And um, how come there's two pros in this car? I mean, you got through the rules, and it shouldn't it be a pro and an am, or have you just squeezed by the rules on that one? Well, when you consider Dario's age and how long he's been out of the car, he's definitely an amateur. I'll make sure we'll tell him that later. <laughs> Hello and welcome, first of all, to the Revive and Thrive workshop. This whole area is basically, we've filled it with craftspeople doing all different things, whether it's marbling, gilding, metalwork, sign painting, we've got all different things going on, live demonstrations, and this is the chance at Revival for you to roll your sleeves up and have a go and get stuck in.
Well, you have rolled up your sleeves and you've I'm gone ready. full Western this year, <laughs> haven't you? Ready to go. Exactly, yeah. And lots of other people are doing the same thing as well and actually getting stuck in, getting covered in paint, having a go, block printing. And I think that's what I'm trying to do here, trying to inspire people to try something new get and have a new experience with something they may have never seen before and actually experience some of these amazing crafts. Keeping cars on the road, they, you know, they've been around since 1950s and 60s for everyone yeah. to enjoy. I, you know, I, I know the expense of that, of course, and uh, yeah. it's um, it, it's the core of sustainability, and so is uh, you know wearing clothing that is that is vintage and tens of years age, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's such an sort of important message to, to give people as well, and it's just sort of th you know thoroughly celebrated over the weekend here. of things to me, but they are getting down into the first corner at Madwick, trying to work out where the dry, where the wet, what line to be on, and so far, so good, everybody managing to stay on the tarmac, which is the, the crucial part, but what a good start by Rob Hall, who's taken that ball position, put away well, and has got the advantage, but there's a good battle going on behind, John Spears is now up into second position, number 88, under threat from the number 24, and 
actually Roger Wills, James Davison, uh, Carl, Roger Wills driving it at the moment, and Roger, I think, is going to squeeze past. Yeah, lovely move. And Holly Bryant really pushing on hard in the number one car, a little bit of slipping and sliding. You can see it's still not dry, and you've got to be challenged, and here comes the number 24, Roger Wills. Roger Wills coming down the inside to take the lead. Yes, he's managed to do it. He here, slides down the inside into the first corner, so Lotus Climax, one, two, three at the moment. Lister Jaguar at the 88. They just saw in the background is in fourth place. So we've got a very good battle. You see that the number one car, the Smith and Bryan car, our on board car now, sails down the inside as uh, they made their way through Ford Water. Next up will be St. Mary's. 51 minutes of the race remaining. Uh, of course, it's a two driver race. They will come in at some point to make a pit stop. But he's looking very close now. But oh. he's got brave it round the outside, heading into St. Mary's. He's going to make it stick. I think just about. Great move by Bryant. Oh, he is into the pits, just trying to look for his team. And uh, it's so compact there at the end. Right of the pit the end. There you go. Watch out for your, your teammate and the team waving you in. Uh, stops. There's a seat insert that will uh, slide in as well. And uh, the co-driver sometimes opts to, to help strap the driver in. They're not the easiest things to, to get out of, but there we go, a, a, a change now. To fight hard, but we're going to be perhaps into a different battle. Oh, look at this. Had to go out wide there. Ollie Bryant, because it was all getting a bit tricky going into the chicane. He does make the move on the exit. This could be for the lead, effectively, now that the other car has stopped. This is for the lead, and Ollie Bryant is in front. Ollie Bryant having taken over from Andrew Smith at the... Uh, oh, whoa, 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 big slide from behind there. The number six, uh, Jaguar, almost getting out into trouble. Chris Ward, that is. Uh, still 10 minutes uh, of this race remaining, so plenty of opportunity oh. to have a look. Is he going to have a look Interesting line inside? he's taken. He's trying to find a different grip on the inside, and it seems to be working. Nigel Greensall may have a chance, but on the exit... Davison just about holds on. We'll just see Nigel Greensill using a slightly different line this time out of the chicane. He's still going to try that inside line once again. So is Davison going to stay around the outside? No, he can't this time because Greensill has taken it. Greensill has gone into second place. I'm not sure. Can James Davison come back? He's having a go at it. But I think Nigel Greensill made an absolutely perfect move. He's got a bit of traffic to kind of help him out here as well. Yeah, and it has helped him out. The number 21 to just shut the door. Coming up towards the line as the checker flag comes out. The Sussex Trophy has taken victory by Ollie Bryant and Andrew Smith. A brilliant performance from both drivers. Andrew did all the work in the first part. Ollie Bryant's held it together with a huge lead in the second part.